Hey guys, how's it going? Mr Mitchell here. In this video we're going to look at an experiment for Boyle's Law, also known as the Pressure Volume Law. So let's get started. Now for this Boyle's Law experiment, we're going to break it down into the steps of a scientific report, so that you could reproduce this experiment in class. So if we start with the aim first of all, the aim of this experiment is to find the relationship between pressure and volume for a fixed mass of gas at constant temperature. And what we mean by a fixed mass of gas is if you imagine that particles in a container, we're going to keep the same number of particles in that container for the gas. So just imagine for convenience that there were 20 particles in your container, i.e. 20 particles in your gas, then that means that the number of particles will stay at 20 and won't change. And you'll notice that we're keeping temperature constant as well, so temperature should stay the same throughout the experiment. Now before I show you the method outlined here, it's worth pointing out that you can do this experiment in different ways. So for example, instead of using my pressure sensor here with a syringe, you could actually use a large column of air with a volume scale next to it and a pressure gauge. And with that, you could use a standard foot pump. But I'd say this method here is a bit more modern and a bit more high tech. So what you would need to do here is collect a pressure sensor, which is this thing here, the syringe which attaches onto the pressure sensor and what we call short tubing. So you'll see the short tubing is labeled here. And you would set the equipment up as shown in the picture. So you'll notice we get a pressure reading on the scale. We've got an on off button just to turn the device on and off. And it simply works through batteries plugged in at the back. We've then got the short tubing here, which it says is a distance of 0.2 milliliters. We've then got our syringe with a piston, which we can move back and forth in order to adjust the volume inside the syringe. And then you'll notice there's also a volume scale on the syringe itself. And here's the important steps that you need to be able to describe in the exam. So firstly, you would move the piston of the syringe and record readings of pressure from the screen on the pressure sensor for each value of volume from the volume scale on the syringe. So let's say you started off with the piston at 0.5 milliliters on the scale. Then you would note down the pressure reading from the screen in kilopascals. Remember that means a thousand pascals or times 10 to the power of three pascals. And then you would move the piston in even steps. So if we went to then one milliliter and wrote down the pressure reading, we could then move it back to 1.5 milliliters and write down the pressure reading and so on. Or in simpler terms, all we're doing here is changing the volume of the air inside the syringe and measuring and then recording recording the pressure reading on the screen. It then says to note that the volume of air in the tubing between the syringe and pressure sensor is not accounted for on the volume scale on the syringe. The tubing should therefore be as short as possible to minimize uncertainties in the volume readings. And in higher physics, we actually see what type of uncertainty this is, and it's called a systematic uncertainty. But you don't need to know that for National 5 level. So if we want to minimize the uncertainty or the error in the volume readings, then we need to make sure this tubing is as short as possible, because we're saying that there's 0.2 milliliters of air there that is not being accounted for on the scale. So in actual fact, all of our volume readings are going to be slightly offset from what they should be. I'm just going to show you a quick simulation of an example of how you would do this experiment. So you'll see here we've got our container of gas with particles moving about randomly in all directions and we've got a pressure gauge attached there with a volume scale. So this is more like the alternative approach to doing this experiment that I mentioned earlier. So you'll see that if I start off at about 110 centimeters cubed for my volume and about 0.9 times 10 to the 5 pascals on my pressure gauge, then if I was to adjust from 110 down to 100, you'll see that the pressure has increased up to 1. If I then adjust from 100 to 90 centimeters cubed, I've got about 1.1 from 90 to 80, I'm up to about 1.2 now. Down to 70 gives you about 1.4 and so on. So you adjust the volume of the gas and record the pressure on the pressure gauge. During the experiment, you could write down your results in a table that looks something like this. So it says to create a table to record values of volume, pressure, pressure times volume and one over volume as shown below. So we'll explain later why we've done a pressure times volume and a one over volume. But for now, just have a look at the volume and pressure columns, which would be what you would write down during the experiment. So let's say we change the volume every 0.2 centimeters cubed or milliliters, because one centimeters cubed is the same as one milliliter. And then we wrote down the corresponding pressure value in times 10 to the five pascals. And you'll see here there are eight readings that we took for volume and pressure. You would then plot a scatter graph of pressure on the y-axis against volume on the x-axis as shown below here. 
and it says remember to draw a curve of best fit through the plotted points. So if we plotted pressure in times 10 to the 5 pascals on the y-axis against volume in centimetres cubed or millilitres on the x-axis, then you can see the points take the shape of a curve. So that's why we've plotted a curve of best fit rather than a line of best fit through these points. So you can see a general trend here, which is that as the volume of the gas increases, the pressure decreases, but you'll see it also sort of levels off and curves off at the end there. So at National 5 level, a graph like this doesn't really tell us an awful lot. But in order to obtain a more useful relationship, we need to plot another graph. So it says here, now plot a scatter graph of pressure on the y-axis, just like before, against 1 divided by the volume on the x-axis. So we've got 1 over volume in centimetres to the minus 3. And it then says, remember to draw a line of best fit through the plotted points. So remember earlier we said there was a 1 over volume column in the table, and that's just found from doing 1 divided by each of these values in the volume column. And that enables us to plot our graph of pressure against 1 over volume. And you'll see looking at the graph that we get a nice straight line relationship, a nice linear relationship for pressure against 1 divided by volume. And at National 5 level, this is much more useful for telling us the relationship between the pressure and the volume. So it says that from the second graph we can see that pressure is directly proportional to 1 over the volume. So what we commonly say at National 5 level is that a line of best fit going through the origin on our graph means that the two variables are directly proportional to each other. And this just means as one goes up, the other one goes up. So in this case, as one divided by the volume increases, the pressure also increases. Or as one divided by the volume decreases, the pressure decreases. So it just means the same thing happens to the pressure that happens to the one divided by volume. But remember, directly proportional or proportional to one divided by something is the same as saying inversely proportional to that thing. So one divided by something, remember, is an inverse. So we could then conclude that for a fixed mass of gas at constant temperature, pressure is inversely proportional to volume. And this is Boyle's law. So what this means is that as volume increases, pressure decreases, or as volume decreases, pressure increases. And that's for a fixed mass of gas where we keep the temperature the same. So that's us answered the aim of the experiment, which was to find the relationship between pressure and volume for a fixed mass of gas at constant temperature. And we've found that the relationship is an inverse one. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Mm -hmm.